Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm looking at something uh, completely new which is uh, the dashboard 2.0 and I'm saying completely new because the uh, version 1.0 just got released um, uh, recently but um, it is also completely new to me I haven't really followed this project right from the beginning and right from the you know the first release which was available before version 1 so my knowledge of this is also very recent so I think in this video we are going to have a first look and I'm going to give you just like an overview of uh, how it works and how it is different and also I've created a lot of examples where I was playing with it so we can look at that one as well and uh, maybe in follow-up videos I will dive deeper into some of the you know the intricate details that uh, makes it you know more unique or more customizable than the existing dashboard. So with this new dashboard 2.0 we are moving away from the existing dashboard mostly because it is based on uh, some old technology which is being uh, depreciated now. So uh, that was AngularJS in the past and now um, this uh, dashboard 2.0 or flow fuse as uh, I'm going to refer it uh, in a couple of times in the future so that is uh, based on the Vue.js which is the new you know well I guess the newer JavaScript library which is also used quite a lot by you know web developers as well and uh, we don't have to think about something completely new because the dashboard 2.0 inherits most of the the things and concepts that was uh, that existed in the dash, uh, dashboard 1.0 or the original dashboard so i think actually migrating from the old dashboard or the new dashboard or getting you know started in the new dashboard is going to be fairly easy so there is going to be familiar structures and familiar nodes and the way I understood it is there is, uh, well, besides moving to different technology, there is a lot of emphasis on extensibility and customizability. So we will see that we can do a lot more in terms of look and feel and, and different applications that we can run uh, on the same dashboard. And there are, of course, some new nodes as well. So we are going to see some markdown nodes, which uh, can give some you know, interesting use cases uh, in a, in a dash to a dashboard. There is a new table view, and because we are using the Vue.js, uh, it is using the Vueify component library, which is going to well potentially give a lot of extensibility in terms of like new widgets that we're able to use uh, on the dashboard. Even though if they are not created by nodes, but we should be able to use them in templates, or at least I think that's the idea. And also there is one interesting feature which is the uh, the support for multi-user dashboard which uh, actually I'm quite interested in. I, th I know this is not something that you know most people really want or interested in uh, but I definitely want to explore that area but uh, that's uh, I didn't have time to do that just yet. And actually if I, before I continue with the slides I just want to give you uh, some things that I'm going to talk about in the rest of the video so you just have a quick understanding of uh, how this dashboard looks like actually let me just move my face here so I don't know what's the best position maybe here now so as you can see the um, uh, it looks it feels and looks uh, very similar to the previous dashboard so we have the same sort of like header layout and we have different tabs these tabs are called different nowadays but uh, we have like you know widgets where you can display data we also have charts just like previously and we can have buttons we can have notifications we have data entry fields drop downs and you know various editors and you know sliders and and of course we can do something and that's the markdown thing that i'm going to talk about later on and of course we do have charts so i was playing around with the charts a lot uh, uh, you know how you pass data into charts how you pass live data into charts how you pass you know uh, pre-made data into charts i think there is a lot of functionality here but uh, probably this is the area which is uh, um, lacking features from the previous dashboard zero not that it is lacking the most um, you know crucial features but maybe there are some things that uh, you won't be able to find and i also played more things around like the theming you know changing colors how to represent the dashboard in a different way not that i've done a lot so just like you know now it has a different background color and some of the accent colors are different and also there is a new whole new uh, controls on tables and displaying data which is actually quite good 
because I think the previous dashboard was lacking in that area quite a bit. So as I said, it's not a huge amount of stuff, but I wanted to just uh, gather all the basics uh, to in this video. And I think I managed to use most of these basic controls uh, within these couple of pages that I created in the past couple of days. And before we begin, let me just add one more slide. And that's about like, you know, what I'm going to talk about in this video. So as I said, um, my persona or, you know, my viewing hat for this video is going to be the, you know, the guy who creates a dashboard for his home automation system, because based on the comments, I think this is the, uh, uh, the ones that you guys use the, uh, this system or sorry, node read the most. So that's how you sort of creating the dashboard and then, you know, how you use the dashboard. But again, if I'm mistaken, just, uh, you know, let me know in the comment section. So first of all, I uh, want to go through some of the resources uh, that where you can find information and the current state of the of the dashboard and uh, do a couple of uh, words about the installation. And then I will go through the same pages that you have just seen. So uh, talk about the basic UI structure, how the um, you know, the, the screen and the different dashboards and the pages look like. And then we go through the different uh, simple controls, how you display information, how you display charts and, you know, notifications, how the data entry forms look like and what you can do with some of these new stuff like the markdowns and the tables. And um, I think we use the charts quite a lot. So I'm again, was spending a little bit more time just to understand how you can pass data to the charts. So this is the main page for the dashboard 2.0 uh, UI. Uh, and uh, so as you can see, uh, previously I mentioned that this is part of the FlowFuse, um, I would say project uh, that is, uh, you know, is supposed to bring this new UI. So I think part of the few flows is the dashboard 2.0. And as you can see from this video, Nike O'Leary is one of the sort of the founders and the main I guess developer for the for the node rest stuff so I'm guessing he is spending considerable amount of his time just to get this uh, flow fuse up and running and just beside the dashboard um, as as far as I can understood from some of the documentation and the online resources so this flows view is a lot of it contains a lot of additional enterprise ready functionality for Node-RED and the dashboard as well so there is a lot of stuff here which I think like normal uh, like DIY Node-RED users will never use, uh, but that's also part of this whole uh, flow fuse. And so there is a lot of things about deployment and, uh, you know, like how you, you know, scale instances and how to deploy instances, which, uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting stuff and very uh, interesting and very important for enterprises, but I don't think that we really need to care about that, or maybe not for now. So this is the main uh, page for the dashboard 2.0 and the reason I it is good to know uh, find or good to find because there is a lot of stuff in here on the documentation. So this is what I usually use for the documentation. And by the way, uh, there is a latest blog section which doesn't have an awful lot here, just uh, one single blog. And as you can see, the um, it was uh, so it was general availability on. So first release was uh, back in June, but I think the, oh, that was a date here. Oh, th this was published just the uh, end of January. So the version 1.0, 1.0 is actually fairly recent. And of course, just like with any other Node-RED component, there is a GitHub behind it. And uh, it contains, you know, pretty much the same documentation and the link to the, uh, the previous page. And um, the other thing I want to say is that even though this is 1.0, it is, you know, far from the, you know, the complete functionality of the dash uh, of the current dashboard, there are definitely some missing features. And as you can see from the number of issues, there are, you know, certainly problems. And I have already run into some smaller, um, mostly annoying issues. And probably I will be able to show you a few of them. Um, but not to say that the whole thing is not working, it's working, but you know, there are some stuff with it, which uh, is, you know, not as polished or maybe, you know, run deployment, I found a couple of issues. And that that's pretty much it. And if you go into the getting started, it gives you, it takes you into the documentation and there is a fairly, 
you know, good documentation on, um, on the various components. But I think when I move into, yeah, certain pages, you can see that it is definitely, you know, work in progress. And also, since we are talking about like, you know, versioning and, you know, how to get started and uh, things like that, there is a section here, which is called the migration guide. And for example, it talks about the differences, what uh, um, version 2.0 is not supporting yet. So you can see like, for example, in a button, icons, tooltips, colors, backgrounds are not supported yet. The issue is created, so that's probably being talked on or, you know, put into a future release. And you can go through, you know, pretty much all the, um, the main uh, controls and <clears throat> see what is missing and um, whether that's, you know, expected to be released. So, for example, if you really want to use the icons, you can go into this issue. Maybe you can just quickly go through it and maybe there is going to be some stuff around, you know, when it's expected and in which uh, release we might expect that piece of functionality to be added. Okay, so that would be the, you know, the current state uh, section. So maybe we can go over to the getting started, which is going to be very easy uh, because after all, this is just another, you know, custom node that we can just uh, easily uh, install. Actually, it is already documented here or mentioned here. It's basically just that much. And if I go into my Node-RED dashboard, then I can go into the Manage Palette and you can see that I have this new dashboard. So it is called the Add FlowFuse slash Node-RED dashboard. And you can just find it in the installation um, just like any other component and uh, you install it. You know, this it works just like the dashboard. I think I might have to restart Node-RED, but I'm not even sure about that. And once you install it, then if you scroll all the way down to the, well, for me, it's at the end of my palette. So dashboard 2.0, and you can see the, the various uh, uh, nodes here. And I think most of them are going to be fairly um, similar. There are some new stuff here, and there are some stuff which I think it's missing. Because if I scroll up to the older dashboard, definitely there is more stuff in here. Uh, but also keep in mind that I think the e-editor and the e-table is not something which uh, is part of the dashboard, but I separated, uh, I installed it separately. It just got added to the same group as the basic dashboard. And just like the original dashboard, we get uh, dashboard 2.0 in this sidebar. And by the way, you might ask this like, can I use dashboard 1.0 and 2.0 together? Yes, you can definitely do that. I'm using the same stuff. So you can see that I have dashboard 1.0 and 2.0. So this is my 2.0 stuff. And I can also show you 1.0. And that is also running. So the two things are not exclusive um, in each other. And um, it, within the dashboard, you can see that it is again fairly similar to the previous one. So again, that's why I'm seeing the widgets here, it's, I think, probably like a bug. Uh, but it has the same thing. You can have pages, you can edit them, and then you have the various groups and the individual nodes or UI elements. And uh, yeah, you can edit them. But there are some additional things here. So there are some, you know, settings and there is different themes that you can have, which is really about the extensibility, which uh, I wanted to point out. Okay, let me talk about the basic structure of the new UI or the new dashboard. And that is going to be fairly similar to the previous one. But uh, again, there has been a couple of additional layers added, again, mostly for um, customizability and in order, to, in order to separate, you know, different dashboards uh, from each other. So if I select a simple text, uh, it's not the it's just a simple UI text then you can see that we still put this into a group and the group itself is very similar to the um, to the to the group that we had previously so if we have a couple of additional options here like but the name the page and the size is the same whether we want to show the group name we have some additional things for custom class if you want to edit a give it a different class and we can do it like visible and interactivity interactivity 
to it. But then if I go to the uh, onto the page, then we already see a couple of different things. So for example, I can assign it to a different UI. So I would be able to build completely separate UIs from each other. And uh, so, you know, they would be like completely different web pages. You won't be able to navigate from one UI to another. I mean, I think this is uh, probably the reason you would want to use the different UIs. And also the, the whole URL changes as well. So now we are going to see that a, every single page gets a like a name which appears in the in the URL instead of that you know complicated code that usually shows up in the uh, um, in the URL and you can assign different themes for the pages that's uh, what I'm going to show you a little bit later and there are also three different layouts and um, I think the layout we had in dashboard 1.0 is actually the fixed layout but now we have a grid and a fi uh, fixed layout. I still don't quite understand the difference between the different uh, layouts because for me, they appear very, very simple. So you can see that, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, sorry. Oh, so here in the documentation, you can read about the layouts. So we have the grid layout, which uh, I think it's, uh, as I said, it's very similar to the, um, to the existing layout, but the, uh, the limitation is that it is it by default it provides a 12 wide layout and then in in a grid again it looks very similar but you can define a wider layout or any sort of layout size uh, which uh, uh, which you know works best for you and you can see that you you have to define these unit widths and this is the the layout which was available in dash uh, dashboard 1.0 i think we are mostly going to use the the grid layout instead of the fixed but um you know if you used to the uh you know re rigorously specify all your units then i don't think there is going to be a lot of difference between the two the one thing i can definitely see that in the old dashboard what had happened is that if you use different um, you know sizes like if you had these smaller groups and then you had this wider group then sometimes the wider group would render through render over another group which doesn't seem to be happening here so as you can see the the tallest group will determine what's the uh, the width of the row whereas in the old dashboard this would probably come up to up to here especially if you have uh, smaller ones, they would definitely populate the space here. So that's not happening anymore. And we also have this new notebook uh, layout, which uh, um, it, it, it looks more like a web page. So all of the, um, the, the groups are uh, under each other. So yeah, I mean, you know, you can use the grid layout to look like a notebook as well. But maybe if you want to control it, that uh, that everything is below each other, just like a web page or a blog or something like that, then you have a dedicated layout for that. OK, so that's all about the layouts and the different, um, you know, the structures. And since I talk about, you know, these these changes, I will also want to mention these themes. So what you can do in the themes is uh, you can specify the colors. And this is something that we had in the old dashboard as well. But now you can have different themes for each of the pages. So here you can see that I use one theme where I have a gray background and the the groups, uh, the group borders are gray. And for this last one, the new theme, I was I, I was speaking, you know, uh, green colors but if you look closely for example I specify the navigation should be um, this blue just like the match the old one but for some reason it is still showing up as white and even on the new theme this is white whereas um, sorry whereas in oh I need to agree go all the way back so whereas in the green theme i specified that the navigation should be dark green so for, probably this is something which is not working and you can change the sizes as well and the widget gaps and of course there is a lot more customizability because in um, in the template node whenever you place a template node which is actually uh, again very similar how we use the templates in 1.0 but you can see that you can have a 
uh, you can use the template as a widget, which is, uh, you know, scoped the group or page or UI. I think mostly we will use the group scope layout, but you can also use this uh, template new to also uh, store CSS styles, which are all pages or single page CSS styles. So that's where you can specify that, like I want a background picture as my, sorry, I want a picture as my background to my dashboard, which uh, I don't think it was possible in 1.0, but with here it's definitely possible. Um, so, by the way, it, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you have seen that was, I made a video on some very fancy gauges that somebody made uh, in, in the dashboard 1.0. So that was using template node as well to create all the custom CSS classes that uh, we used for, you know, displaying the numbers and the dial and, uh, you know, some of the graphics. So now it is more built in and more accessible within the template node. So that should be enough about the structure and everything. So let's go over to the, um, to the basic controls. And these basic controls are not really going to be any different. So let me just talk about the text. So that's what we use the most to display anything. And as you can see, it is very similar to the, um, to the previous one. Again, you can style it here separately. You just like with all the other components, you have additional field here that you can provide a CSS class. So that's the CSS that you can define in a template node. And you know, you can specify a size and you know the name of it. So the only thing which is not available here that I'm lacking is that in the previous version you could specify what part of the message to display, which is by default the message dot payload and you could use the same field to provide suffixes so for example units of measure so that's not available here so i'm hoping that that would be added a little bit later so that's what i used on the first to just show you know measurement data which is coming through mqtt so it looks the same as previously and it you know it uses it exactly the same way and then, um, well, the, the, the other way you usually want to display stuff is uh, using charts. And we have a chart component here, or a chart node. And by the way, we don't have a gauge yet. Um, so uh, that might be a little bit disappointed to, for some of you. So this is how a chart looks like. And uh, there are two notable differences here. Uh, well, again, we have the CSS class, which is new, but um, you can only define these three types at the moment, so line, bar, and scatter. And um, scatter is basically just a line chart which doesn't have the, uh, um, you know, the lines. It just only have the data points. And okay, we have a separate, uh, you know, pointers as well. And there is a um, an option that if a message is received, then you that uh, data is appended to the data which is already displayed in the chart or it replaces. It is a nice feature, but uh, you can still, you know, delete the whole content of the chart by sending an empty array to the chart. So I can definitely live without this feature. And I think in most of the charts that we use, you would use append anyway. So it's nice, but, uh, I, it's not something that I was missing, but then you know you can format the um, the x axis. Again, you had a lot more options in uh, in uh, chart uh, 1.0. So if you wanted to customize how the time is displayed, timestamp, for example, you only wanted to display the names or you know day and the name of the day, you could um, create some formatting options here. You just have a drop down now. It says time scale or linear. And the other big change, okay, I think I mentioned two, but it's already like three or four, is that uh, there is a lot of um, customizability of what part of the message is the uh, shows the data series, which is by default the message or topic, and then what part of the message is are the X and Y data. And of course there are some defaults. So by default, message.topic is the name of the series, message.payload is the x, sorry, the y value, and the x value is always the time when the message is received. But uh, you can change all of these. So if you have 
a specific data structure that you want to pass over to the chart you don't need to reformat it um, well in not all cases you would need to reformat that message you can just specify these three values here and then the chart component will know where to pull the data from uh, from the incoming message but again if you are just passing data through like you know in I just specify that okay the temperature is now called temperature and the payload is I just did done some formatting to the uh, the data just remove the uh, decimal places and I did the same for the humidity and uh, again I created a filter so it doesn't uh, it only posts the differences to the chart and if you just pass it to the chart you see series is message or topic I haven't specified these I left the action on append then we get a nice chart just like we expected it looks a little bit fuzzy because uh, now it shows each data point with a circle and there are a lot of data in here uh, and we have a legend just like pe uh, before we have title you know everything is auto formatted the scale is auto scaled uh, the the date is automatically formatted that's the thing which I can't uh, um, change at the moment so I mean I would probably use other than you know the US time format but it just says time or timestamp and you can't um, uh, change that so not an awful lot of change here some minor functionalities some more functionalities we are definitely missing some chart types but uh, you know the line the bar is here which I think is the most uh, frequently used I'm not really sure how much you are into like notifications I use notifications a lot and these haven't really changed you can specify that uh, um, you know, well you can even specify the scope of this notification you can specify where to show it sorry oops what did I do yeah you can specify where to show the notification the timeout whether you want to dismiss button and uh, I tried some of these not all of them didn't not all of them work for example bottom center that did not work but um, you know it just like it does this and it counts down and then it disappears if you don't want to see it you can dismiss it sooner simple but effective okay so that was that was the that was the so this was the grid layout that you can see here so as uh, as you can see by default the grid page is 12 units wide and all of my uh, groups are six units wide so I have just two uh, next to each other and of course if I oops if I make this uh, smaller then as long as it can fit two next to each other then uh, it does two then it will you know do only one so this is this would be like a mobile view but again it won't put three okay so the next page is so this is also grid layout and um, uh, yeah that's also grid layout and um, I just wanted to play around with controls uh, sorry entry for uh, form controls and I wanted to play around with this new template um, node that you can see here so but if, let's look at the form controls first so the form controls where are we yeah they are here and also if you look at the side you can see that definitely we have much fewer nodes uh, what we had in dashboard 1.0 but we have the form which to be honest I never use the form because I rather handle all the data myself I'm not really sure how much you are using the form but I know you can use the form and then you can you know specify all the different controls and then basically it submits the data in one go but um, as I said I usually do all my entry handling so I don't use the form so the next thing we have we have input text we have buttons drop downs radio groups sliders and switches so the only thing which I did not use from this group was the switch but I used all the other things and um, so we have a title which is a drop down and you know it has a label and it has all the values it works exactly the same way as before uh, and again you can you know create some dynamic classes 
and so you can see these classes everywhere so you can have like you can even have a groups which you can have a group which has different borders and a different background color if you want to highlight that you can do this with input components as well um but the rest of it is you know it's pretty much standard uh, as you can see you specify the topic of the outgoing message and then you have the entry form so the big difference here is that instead of having different forms for all the date input and the date picker and the time picker and color picker and everything it's part of the input text you just specify the different modes so you still have multi-line email password number color picker date time da -da -da -da, week picker month picker so all of them are available here the one thing i really like is that you can set it up to create a message when uh, the focus leaves or focus enters so uh, maybe not even use this but i think in most cases that's uh, the that will be the most useful so as you click somewhere else you press tab then it will send a message of the current state and then you can sp sp still specify the topic and yeah everything else is same as before so this is my name first name and a last name and then as you can see the birth date is a date picker and uh, uh, okay that's a radio group which is it's just like a drop down in terms of configuration but you can uh, it looks different obviously and the slider is again just like a slider so you set, uh, specify the mean step max and uh, output on release or continuously without sliding exactly the same as it was before so what i was doing here is i whenever you make some selection uh, the information is stored in the context so in the flow context you can see that everything that i entered is here and when i press the button so the button is you know it has a label and then it sends out a payload and a topic then i collect all these details so i pick up the details from this flow object and put it into the payload and i put it into this markdown component so what this markdown component looks like is um if you have ever edited a GitHub and you edited the README file of the GitHub, that is the same markdown formatting as the GitHub. So um, you have heading one, two, three, you can do bold, italic, you can do um, ordered list, um, unordered list, quote, yeah, horizontal rule and links. Um, well, but you can do a lot more. So what is really happening here is, for example, I have a simple, sort of like a page or letter and now you can see that i can create uh, these markdowns so the double curly brackets and a reference to any part of the message which is sent to this node and it would automatically update so you can see that john doe actually it should be the other way around yeah so again it's very simple and you can see the different uh, formatting options here I put the birthday here and this one goes to here so this now updates um, again very simple to add a information render some information specific to what you have here um, and just um, I mean in the old dashboard you would have to use the uh, template node and you actually have to code all the html document but you can use the markup language here just to create some you know headings and and sort of like good looking content html type document here and also if i go into the documentation markdown and so you can see that you can do have these placeholders and then I mean actually that's the example that they have given i just made some few changes but um, you can also use these mermaid charts and here you can use each of these charts have again a markdown language format which can then now render you know simple charts in your documentation so that's one way to add very simple charts as well but again if you look at the mermaid documentation there is a lot of things you can do like flow charts and uh, it's like flow diagrams and sequence diagrams and class diagrams and you know states i mean you can go through here and 
uh, there is a whole load of I mean Gantt charts you can create Gantt charts from here so there's a whole load of things here that you can do and uh, uh, mind map um, which again in a home automation scenario I'm not sure if this is going to be very useful but again yeah great functionality um, if you look at my example, um, I was just passing this information through, like, you know, part child, da, 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 and I put the number here, which comes from this slider, and it just doesn't do it. And this gives a syntax error. So that's one of the other bugs which I noticed. And by the way, if I close this and I refresh the screen, you see, it shows, I mean, for example, this part of the chart is not even changed. I mean, there is nothing dynamic in here. All I do is I click on update and it fails to render this part of the chart. So I've no idea what's going, uh, going on here. You see, this one is fine. As soon as I, you know, change it, then it breaks. So me, no, I don't even need to provide the percentage because even if you look at the basic, um, uh, yeah, you don't need a percentage. So this is where the, the age goes and then the other one is always 50 and it, it renders correctly for the first time but it doesn't do it for the next time so yeah i have no idea the um, issue list is just too long to go through all of them to see if this has been reported or not okay next one is uh, everyone's favorite the chart and um, so as i said uh, we have line charts, bar charts, and sorry, scatter charts. Uh, and I tried to use all three of them. And as you can see, the scatter chart, the scatter plot is basically just a line chart without the numbers. And what I wanted to show you here is that uh, the how you pass the data has changed, but it hasn't changed a lot. Actually, I think in this regard, it actually it was made easier to pass data to the chart. And it is clearly documented in, uh, in the document here because, uh, and I, to be honest, I was sticking to these examples here uh, that uh, were provided here. So if, oops, if I clear all the charts and I can send a data with a topic and a payload. So these are just random numbers. Uh, that are getting generated and I'm generating uh, various different series which are always a uh, you know a, a set a number of difference from each other so you can see how the uh, you know the line chart draws the lines and then connects all the dots and it automatically determines or uh, you know finds all the different uh, uh, data series and also the bar chart just you know shows the latest uh, value obviously it won't be able to show any differences but all I'm doing here is uh, as you can see I'm you know sending four set sorry five sets of data in in an array which has temperature one two three four five and the random values with a set difference and then it, re it you know it renders all these like that and you can see the scatter chart actually it you know it's just like the line chart without the uh, the, the num sorry the lines and if I do, um, what I can also do is uh, instead of just sending a payload with a number, I can send a payload which has a Y attribute and the number which does exactly the same one as before. So you can do that as well. And you can also do X and Y value where you can send the data, sorry, the date in as a value. So what you can see here now is I program this button to send in again some random values, but it always sends them one second apart. So even if I press really quickly, then you don't get that, um, you know, dots very uh, close to each other because for the previous examples, it was taking the actual timestamp and the data was received. And here I'm passing the uh, the x value as well so that was the previous one when i only passed the y value and it behaves exactly the same way as you're just passing the value in the payload but here i was passing the x as well which is the time and as you can see i always increment the time by 1000 which is one 1000 milliseconds or one second and that's how you you send data in if you also want to send the time uh, 
with the data value and you can see these are one second apart and finally yeah and you can just do the clear all just like before so the clear all sends an empty array and I can also send multiple values in so what you're going to see here that for the temperature one I'm actually sending two values um, 0.1 second apart so if I do this then you would notice that the first series which is temperature one always has some extra value so you're sending like two values at the same time um, probably this is the one which makes the least uh, sense but again you might be receiving you know a lot of readings together you just wait for some readings to be sent and then you want to send like two values in a particular series so you can do that and then finally of course we can send full series in so this is my example when i send you know full series into the uh, data set into the chart and of course the bar chart only displays the last values so seven six and two two six seven and the line chart just displays the lines and here if i send the full series you can see that again i am oops i should have deleted this that was just an example and actually i should delete this as well because we don't need any of the others so just to show you clear full series okay that's done so I'm sending in a, again, I need to send a topic. And in the payload, you can see that I'm sending a whole uh, array with dates and values and dates and, sorry, timestamp and values, timestamp and values for all the various series. So you can see that the final value is 267 and 267. So three, four, A, B, and C. And uh, it works. So it's, it's, pretty much uh, possible to do exactly the same functionality as uh, we used to in 1.0 the data structure is slightly bit different and also in um, if I go back to the documentation uh, there is uh, there is some additional examples how you can send in some nested values and it says in the documentation that it's quite pos uh, quite common that to, to use these nested value formats so when you have two um, series in different keys and to be honest i have no idea where i would use this uh, i mean i got used to converting my data before sending it to charts so maybe that's why i don't need so such a uh, complicated uh, you know structure where you have a value here and you have a nested dot value as well but as the um um the documentation uh, clearly explains so now you can see that you can specify that the value and the nested dot value is actually a different series in the data set and then the x value is in this case that's the x value so for this x value it's going to plot 19 and 75 as a different series so uh, what was the x value 23 so 23 is here so that's the two different points that is going to plot from this data set if you have configured the series and the x like this in the line chart so again a lot of possibilities here i think this is probably going to help you to just process the data whatever format comes in directly in the chart i mean probably there are some um uh, restrictions but as long as the data is coming in an array with and with each data points or each set of data points in an object you most probably will be able to use the series and the x values to configure that for me it might be just easier to convert to one of the standard formats and finally i just wanted to give you another example so um, here i have a function node which uh, um picks up a random radian number so and then it calculates the sine and the cosine for that radian so that degree and as you can see i'm passing the x in degree and the y it calculates the sine and the cosine so it picks up random numbers from the you know the sine cosine curve and it displays them in a scatter plot and uh, 
in a scatter plot, I have configured, I've given the, uh, that the, uh, sh say, sorry, the shape is star. And I said, okay, the series is still comes from the topic. And then, well, actually I haven't really configured here, but the, you know, the X is the X and the Y is the Y. So if you look at this one, scatter plot, so it's now empty. And if I add the point, then it just picks up a random uh, degree. Uh, so radian, so point 0 0.053, and it calculates the sine and the cosine. If I keep adding these random numbers, you will notice that the, the shape of the sine and the cosine curve will start to be visible in the chart. Okay, not that it's any useful. I, again, I just wanted to show you how you can pass these X and Y coordinates separately. I mean, in the previous version, you had to have a different uh, uh, data series and label, not label. Um, no, I think the data series was in, in a two dimensional array. Now it's a little bit easier because you can just, you know, specify them as X and Y or whatever other things. That, so if my data would be, you know, this would be degree and this would be value, then I could, um, here I could, I could put here degree and value, which are the keys that contain the X and Y data for the chart to display. Okay, I think that should be all about the charts. Um, I hope it's uh, self-explanatory. Well, not self-explanatory, but it's it's um, it gives you all the different flavors that you can choose. And uh, really, there's a lot of options here, even though that we don't have some of the types that you might use. So going back. And so that was the data entry and we have done the charts. So let's go into this new theme. So the, uh, the difference here is, uh, well, first of all, the theme, which I already mentioned when we talked about the pages, and this is using notebook, notebook layout. But really what I wanted to show here, so you can see that all the groups are one below each other. So one thing I wanted to show here, uh, since we are talking about the bugs, you can see it has temperature and temperature here. But if you look at the flow, this is the part of the flow. It only has one temperature. If you go to the dashboard and new theme, weather station, it has one temperature. But I had another temperature, which uh, like had another temperature uh, or UI input or f a label, which was called temperature, but I deleted it. And then it, it, it did not delete from the, from the UI. So this guy is still here and I can't even delete it because it doesn't uh, appear anywhere else. Another bug. But what I wanted to show you the the table and the template. So you can see table and the template here. So by now I accidentally missed the switch, but switch is just like the switch before. And I missed the well, I didn't talk about the event and the UI control, but I think and I also mentioned the form, but we pretty much covered all the rest of it. So the the final ones are the uh, the template and the table. So the table is uh, something that, oh yeah, it did not exist previously at all because we had, oh, we had the table, but this is the UI table. That's not part of the um, dashboard 1.0. And I also have another table, which is called the e-table, which again, wasn't part of the um, dashboard 1.0. So we always had to use the template to create a simple, you know, table slash table, kind of component. So this is what is gone now, because if you want something very simple representation of a table data, so rows and columns, then you can just pay, uh, uh, place this table um, node and you can put it a size, uh, put it, yeah, give it a size. Um, you can give it, you know, max rows. You can say that it, you want it to auto calculate the columns, so it would just display all the data which is coming. In, or you can specify the various keys and the labels for, you know, the key in the database or the data set and the label which, you know, should be displayed in the first, uh, in the column header. But if you just do this, and I have a simple data set here, which 
contains a list of people, so if a name, email address, city, MAC address, timestamp, and a credit card details, and it comes in an array. So if I send this in, then it just displays it. So very simple, you don't have to do anything, it just automatically displays all the information which is in the table. Again, I don't understand why I can specify max rows here, but it doesn't give a hoot about the max rows because it's definitely displaying more than 10. So with this form, there is no, you know, any special formatting, it just shows the data, but it's a really, you know, nice representation of your data. It's very easy to do. You just throw it onto your dashboard and it's done. If I had created the labels uh, myself, uh, I mean, here in this list, what I could have done is I have, uh, I could have given it a more, you know, friendly name here, or I could have excluded some of the fields like the MAC address and a credit card if I don't want, or a timestamp, and just have a subset of the data which is coming into the node. And uh, I have a separate list here, which just so, you know, shows temperatures, rooms, ID, target and column, uh, current. If I do this, then, uh, yeah, it just shows the value, nothing special. Okay, let's go back to the people because the other thing I have is this template node. So what we already talked about the template when I talked about the CSS and the sky uh, and the styles, but let's talk about the widgets, the group scope widgets. And here the big difference is that um, besides doing actual HTML code here, we can create all these templates which come from the Beautify template. And if I go to this uh, documentation, so if I go to template, and then it says provides custom um, JS or HTML, so you can do still custom HTML or JS uh, in this, but you can also use the Beautify components to render something. And if you look at this, there is absolute you know, this huge selection of various UI controls that you could create, like toolbars, overlays, tooltips, navigation stuff, uh, you know, tabs, text fields. So you might not use all of them because there is a separate note for that, but there is things here for the, uh, um, for the table layout. You know, you can create a carousel. For example, I wanted to create a carousel here uh, using the template node. I followed the documentation and when I deployed it, it looked like that the whole dashboard died. Fortunately, Node-RED didn't die. So uh, it's definitely working for a table. It might not work for all of them or maybe I was just, you know, not following the documentation properly. But if you would be able to do all these, then uh, there is a lot of stuff here. Look at pages, alerts, banners ratings and uh, I think it's quite powerful and this is why and I think it um, um, yeah it, it mentioned somewhere that with this you you can pretty much get the functionality what was available in the e-table so that's one of the custom node that I also e installed for dashboard 1.0 and I used in the past so so this is the normal table and then the template is here. So now you can see that I am, you know, still displaying the same set of data, but here I have, you know, proper column headers now. Uh, I have the, you know, the, uh, the number of records are appearing in different pages and I can scroll through the different pages. I can set uh, how many items to show in uh, this and I can also search. So queen, and then it automatically filters. So how easy is that? And for this, I had to do very, very little. Well, actually, what well, I specifically had to do very, very little because that was the example that was given. So I just copied the example, but um, it's actually this example was given to something else. This example was given for the temperature list because now you have still the search, you have the different pages, although there is uh, very little data here. And then you, what you can see here that, for example, this um, title is uh, center aligned. Oh yeah, uh, by the way, you can click on the column headers and it automatically sorts the data. So how cool is that? And you can see that this here is center aligned and you have a sort of like a widget layout for one of the, the columns. And again, if you go into the UI template and if you scroll down again, just to talk about the various examples. 
So you can use all these Viewtify ta data table components. So here there is a lot of um, options here, maybe it takes you to, to that subset of the documentation of how you can, you know, conf uh, sorry, format some of the fields. So you can see now here, you know, this is currency, so this is right aligned and uh, you can make this to scroll uh, within the data and um, okay you can add measurements here and pagination and what's in here so you can see you can add icons you can do selections and you can select different items or you can have some additional you know graphical fields you can have what's available here okay i'm not really sure Maybe you can do some translation between the data and, and tables. Uh, you can also exclude tables, so you can just edit the table component. And uh, like you can create uh, widgets like this, or you, know, you can group the data together. So you just have to configure these in the template and then it will automatically render the table with all the sort of like the rich controls uh, that you need. So you can see you can add actions i mean that would be useful because then it sends you know sort of like selecting an item for editing and uh you know yeah more info and um and there was a lot of other stuff here for sort of like yeah progress bars and you can do you know progress bars which actually move and you know you can do ratings as well and um and actually, yeah, circular progresses, and you can also animate them. Um, you, maybe you can display data like this, sort of like a gauge. Uh, you can use the progress for that. So for in this example here, this is also made by linear progress. And if I show you the example, actually it is, I mean, it, it, it takes a little bit getting used to, but uh, it is very similar how the template component worked uh, previously. I mean, this is a template component, but you can see that you define that I want this template, um, you know, a template based on the the array which is coming from the uh, from the payload, and that's the thing which uh, renders the search bar on the top. And then you define that I, I want to create a data table based on the message.payload. And the search is this search. And then you do the headers. Uh, and you can see that uh, for the field current, I want the header to look like this. So center aligned and the text is called center aligned. So this is how you can rename the field headers. And um, for the... Um, for the item target so instead of like you know defining all the different items you just have to call on the items that you want to specify separately so the uh, the item target or the field target uh, i want to you know render the item target and i want to add oops uh, degree centigrade so all these are added here just the sort of like the, uh, the unit of measure as a suffix to the number. And then for the item current, which is this one, or basically that column, I want to create a, a linear progress bar with the value of the item current, and the minimum is that, the maximum is that, the height of the sort of the current bar is that, and then it should get a color, um, uh, the color should be defined by a function, and you can define the function here. And as you can see, uh, then I just want the, again, the item, the current value to be rendered with a deg um, centigrade. So it shows 20 centigrade. And the num, sorry, the get color function is basically this. If the current is higher than the target, then it's red, other than, uh, otherwise it's green. So that specifies the color of the, uh, the progress bar. I mean, damn, it's very simple. It's uh, it's such an easy way to configure this. And, you know, if I've set, instead of like, you know, progress linear, I could have used any of the others, uh, any of the other in the examples like ratings or, you know, progress circular or uh, I could have used alerts. I mean, it's not a good example for this particular data set, but, you know, you can use badges and alerts and uh, timelines. 
okay, I mean, yeah. So really, it, it needs a different set of uh, data, but you can do all these with these uh, simple templates, which I think it is, uh, you know, it's pretty good and it is pretty, you know, powerful. So I wanted to use this uh, template to uh, do a carousel. So I had a set of data which basically just contained URLs and I, instead of the V date table, I wanted to do a V carousel, I think, uh, here. So yeah, it's here. So you can do something like this. I mean, you know, it's an uh, image rotator and all you have to do is it's, it should be V carousel and V carousel item. And then in the source, you just specify the, um, the image source and you can just uh, replace this with, you know, double curly brackets item dot URL or something like that. And then um, it, it should render it, but it just didn't do. And it seemed that the dashboard was just hanging. So I must have made some mistake. But if all this is working, then again, you can probably understand the, uh, the amount of different UI elements that now we can just add without thinking about the HTML clothes and classes. You just have to figure out how to configure these templates and uh, it will be just as easy. So I definitely want to spend more time on this because I think it gives a lot of additional stuff. And I think the reason they haven't added the gauge is because with this Utify components and the template, you can probably render very nice gauges and probably much better than uh, uh, just the standard gauge that we had in 1.0. We are coming up to one hour and I never realized that this uh, review is, well, so this, yeah, this video is going to that, take that long. Um, and it was probably, a maybe it was a little bit more details than I originally anticipated, but yeah, it's not a simple, I mean, dashboard was never a simple stuff because there's a lot of, you know, functionality in it. And now there is even more functionality, not to mention the things that I haven't even mentioned because I haven't really tested it. So I think that really should be the end of this presentation. So let's just recap what we talked about today. So I think in this very long video, I managed to give you a, well, I wanted to say overview, but well, maybe 15 minutes would have been an overview, but like a very good understanding what uh, what is new in Dashboard 2.0 and how that really compares to the original Dashboard, uh, the, you know, the old Dashboard that we are all love and used to, or maybe just hate a little bit, but definitely get used to. I think even though it feels quite different, I think there is a lot of different concepts. Uh, so at least it should f uh, feel familiar enough to get started. And I would say that I think probably everyone should think about or consider migrating to Dashboard 2.0 eventually, because as I said, the old technology in the Angular JS is no longer supported. So even though everything is working fine, I'm pretty sure that at some point the uh, you know the support for it will be dropped, and maybe in a certain um, Node.js version that is not going to be supported anymore. So I think sooner or later we will have to get, uh, say goodbye to the old dashboard and basically just move everything over to the new one. But if you are just using, you know, some simple charts and the usual input fields and display element displaying stuff, it should be fairly easy to migrate this stuff over. So that basically explains how the two different to each other and whether you migrate. And besides that, I think now you have a very good basic understanding of the basic nodes and you know how to display information, how to create input fields, how you can make charts. And I think I managed to just show you some of the new stuff which is coming mostly on the markdowns and the templates and the table nodes, which are also very powerful maybe some of them are not going to get used in the usual sort of like home automation dashboard scenario. But if you're using Node-RED for something else, maybe those are the functions that you were really looking for in, in a new dashboard implementation. But I think that would be the scope of this video. I'm planning to uh, definitely experiment more with, you know, the, uh, the small details within dashboard uh, 2.0. And once I got some, you know, 
some chunks of new functionality or new things that I can show I'll be covering new uh, videos if you have any particular uh, things that you want to you know figure out or you get stuck or you want me to look into just you know leave some comments in the comment section below and of course just like with any of my previous flows if you want this particular flow this particular example I'm going to put the link to this uh, this flow in the video description but thanks for watching this tutorial video I think that will be all for today and hopefully see you next video.